So I'm going to talk to you about cortisol and yoga. And why am I holding my dog? <laughs> well, cortisol is our major stress hormone, and she is like my stress relief. So I imagine that she, not only yoga, is helping to reduce my cortisol levels. So how is cortisol produced? There is something called the HPA axis, and that is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. The adrenals are actually what is releasing cortisol. The hypothalamus has various different inputs. It can be light, it can be the need to mobilize energy, it can simply be the time of day, and it will then, via chemicals, talk to the pituitary. The pituitary releases a hormone into the bloodstream that then activates the part of the adrenals known as the adrenal cortex. Cortex means bark, so the outer part, and cortisol is released to manage the task at hand. If levels are too high, though, that is problematic for us. And we do need to have mechanisms to turn off the HPA axis. So one is just a reduction of input to the hypothalamus. The other is a structure in the brain called the hippocampus, which has very sensitive neurons that specifically pick up cortisol. And when the need is no longer present, it will signal to the HPA axis, specifically the hypothalamus, to stop releasing cortisol. Unfortunately, this hormone that is absolutely vital in our body for various reasons can become chronically high. The impact of that is that actually we damage this very delicate hypothalamus, uh, hippocampus rather, and so those cells with their receptors that pick up cortisol and then tell the hypothalamus to stop generating this mechanism die or atrophy and they're less effective. So we find in a lot of different health conditions, most of them having to do with high-level anxiety stress, that we find elevated levels of cortisol. So how can yoga help? Well, a host of studies, probably the first one would have been around 2004, have shown that yoga of various different types simply reduces levels of cortisol in the body. And that means we're normalizing it. And just to be clear, cortisol for most human beings is higher in the morning and lower in the evening and has a trajectory. So it's not like we just always want cortisol low, but what yoga seems to do is it normalizes the trajectory. There's also another component here. So if the hippocampus becomes larger, and it can, it's a neurogenic structure. That means it creates its own neurons, right? So if it becomes larger, but there is a huge input of cortisol, the receptors are going to be able to manage that, still taking in that input and telling the hypothalamus, Shh, calm down, we don't need so much cortisol. And research has shown quite a lot that intense physical exercise increases hippocampal volume. And so yoga offers this benefit of both reducing cortisol levels normalizing the trajectory, but also increasing hippocampal volume through the asana practice. It should be noted that other things that also have shown to increase hippocampal volume are mindfulness, a component of yoga, and a gentle yoga practice, which was undertaken in India in a six-month study, also showed increased levels of hippocampal volume. So yoga basically brings us in two different ways to manage cortisol more effectively and use it, and also to reduce levels when it's unnecessary. And if you don't have that, I hope you have a little monkey if you're not able to practice like this, because research also shows that healthy relationships help to reduce stress, and that will have an impact on the HPA access as well. Say bye, Minnie. Thank you for all of your insights.